been our women. You've been our field king. You've been the lifter of our heads. We thank you because there is none like you and none beside you. Nobody can beat and teach you. Nobody can vote you in. Nobody can vote you out. You are absolutely undenied to God. And whatever we are going through, we can put it into your capable hand. Oh, God, we give you praise in this morning. We give you all the glory. We love you. Because over 2,000 years ago, you were hung up for our kingdoms. And that's reason enough to give you praise. That's reason enough to give you glory.
up what he's doing in your life, then show some signs. Praise the Lord. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, listen, I love you all, but if you don't know what you're doing, don't touch nothing. Please. Amen. Yeah, I couldn't get the old give thanks effect because I couldn't hear it. Somebody been messing with them settings. But anyway, um, but join us in the book of Romans, 
as we um, go in and forth in the Word of God. And so I'm looking forward to that. So let's go to the Word of God on today. Cut it down a little bit. Go to the Word of God on today. Now, these 14 verses, I can't preach at all, but I can preach some of them. Okay? All right, we don't want to read it all because I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Uh, listen, let's, let's look at this. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Some of your Bibles may have the Sea of Galilee. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, as called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, that would be James and John, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out, immediately they got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat. And you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Yeah. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, Amen. and fish yeah. laid on it, and bread. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have <laughs> just caught. Yeah. Well, I got this far, I might as well. Simon <laughs> Peter went up and dragged the net to the land, four large fish, 153. Although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. I want to preach about breakfast with Jesus. Breakfast with, with Jesus. What to do when you don't know what to do is what the disciples are experiencing. Being called from their occupations, being called from their homes, being called from their personal lives to follow Jesus for three and a half years. And now they feel a sense of lost. They, they feel a sense of abandonment, a, salt, a, a, a sense of, I don't know what to do with myself now. Because Jesus, who we have labored with for three years, we have followed with for three years or so, we have, we have been with him and now he has been taken from us. That, that's their thinking. Their thinking is, where do we go from here? What's next? And, and how do we maintain when we don't have the master with us? We've seen the many 
uh, miracles. We've experienced the crusades. We've seen the healings and the restoration of those who were blind. We, we have seen the multitude of fish and bread. We have seen so much, and yet we've heard so much. But yet we have seen his risen presence. And we've even, we've even seen his scars. But where do we go from here? Where, where do we go from here when, when, when life hands us unusual circumstances? All of us in this room, we have been dealt with a sense of hot life that has had us unusual circumstances. And we don't like to be on the other side of unusual circumstances. So we don't know how to control. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to go forth. We don't, we don't know our next move. So what do we do? We go back to what we know. We go back to what we're comfortable. We go back to what, what's common to us because we always can go back, yeah, to what we know. This is what we see in the text, that these disciples have decided to go back to fishing. What they were called from, they went back to. Y'all didn't hear me. What they were called from, they were called back to. Now, when, they, when I say what they were called from, you remember, Jesus called them from the shores to follow him. And now they're going back to what they know. They, they're going back fishing and they, they, they find their relief in fishing. And perhaps if we just get away and get on the seashore, get in the boat, get out on the lake of Galilee, then yet we will maybe find out where our next Decision is what right, our right. next move is. What what? So, sometimes there are times that we have to get away yeah, so we can yeah. look and search things yeah, out. Yeah. Oh, y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Right. Uh, now I used to drive. You know, I don't drive no more because gas five dollars and twenty nine cents. Uh, but there are times that you just see, you just can't yeah. find your way, and you find yourself just wanting to just get away. Yeah. Right. So disciples have found found a, a place to get away. And, and they found their solitude in fishing. We, we know that. We, we know we can fish. If we can't do nothing else, we can, we can fish. So, so they go fishing. They, they go fishing and they go fishing in familiar territory. But they go fishing down in the new lake. But in a lake that they know about, they know about the Sea of Galilee. They, that I think Tiberius, if somebody would say Tiberius, he was a Roman emperor. I'm not going to go through all that. But we're going to get a little touch Tiberius when we get to Romans. But anyway, um, on the lake of the Sea of Galilee, they have seen much. And, and they have experienced much. They, they've experienced the raging of the sea. They've experienced the calming of the sea. They have experienced so much on the Sea of Galilee, and yet they're out here in confusion. Disarray. Trying to figure out the next move. And while they're fishing, they toil all night. They toil all night. Now, nothing more frustrating to a person who fishes is to go fish and not catch anything. I went fishing one time, sixth grade. It wasn't for me. Then yesterday I was bored. I was upset. I was mad because everybody's line was catching fish. Except for mine. I mean, even the girls was catching fish. You know, you don't want me when a girl outdo you. Y'all know how we feel about that fellas. We don't want a woman out doing us. And, and so when, 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 when my line didn't catch, I looked at my bait, I looked at the hook, I said, well, maybe I'm not doing something right, but they just not biting on my line. And when I moved down on another side, it seemed like somebody would catch fish right where I were. And I moved on the other side, it seemed like somebody kept biting. The fish were not biting. The nets were empty. And they tore all night and caught nothing. What do you do when you're all night straining, toiling? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. When it's an all night. When you have stayed up all night, your pillow is wet with tears. You have walked the floor of disappointment, and yet you have no solace. But in the morning, in the morning, while they're on the boat, Jesus. 
Jesus is on the shore in the morning after the toil and after the strain and after the disappointment in the morning Jesus is on the shore that's the good thing about that listen to what he says because they have to they're taking they're taking orders from a man on the shore now before we go back to this Let's look at Luke chapter 5. All right, you right there with me? In Luke chapter 5, that's the calling of the fishermen. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus comes out there to the lake, and there is Peter, and Peter's on that boat, and, uh, and, and Jesus said, listen, let me use your boat for a second. I need to use your boat for a poor people. Because they're crawling me, and I need to use your boat for a poor people. So he allows Jesus to get in his boat, and he pulls back off from the shore, uh -huh. and Jesus begins to teach. Let's look chapter 5. Yeah. He begins to teach from the boat. Yeah. After the crusade is over, after the revival is over, we after Jesus uh, gave the benediction, he has a conversation with Peter. Uh -huh. And in his conversation with Peter, he says, and the, the rest of them have went to clean the nets. Right. He says, hey, um, Peter, um, listen. Throw your net over, over the boat. Peter says, um, I don't know who you are. Just be, I don't know this man is. Well, um, we, we told all night, and we caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, y'all missed the whole summer. Right? <laughs> nevertheless, at your word. For a long time, and I know I've been fishing for a while, and I know I know what I know because I know what I know because this is what I do. But nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to obey your command. And the Bible said that they caught such a catch that their nets begin to break. And he had to call the other brothers in. Come here, James. Come here, Andrew. Come here, John. I need y'all to help me pull this in. Watch this. When he did that. Peter then dropped his net and he began to bow on his knees and he said, Lord, depart from me because I'm a sinful man. Because anybody who can tell me to drop my nets on the boat and I know I've been up all night and this man has commanded that my provisions be provided for is somebody I'm going to listen to. And I want to tell you today that when you get in life's crutch, just have a nevertheless at your word. Lord, I'm going to trust your word. Lord, I'm going to believe in your word. Lord, I have nothing else but your word. Nevertheless. And he can have you now. At your word. At your word, Lord. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And let's go back to 21. Chapter 21. Chapter 21. They're taking instructions yes, from a man. Yes, Come on, Simon, don't do me this. They're taking instructions yes, from a man on the shore. Yes. We've been out here all night. Right. On, now, the text says, he says, children. Uh -huh. Now, this was a common greeting for working men in this day. In other words, in the Greek language, he would literally say, lads. It wasn't an insult, but he says, have you any food? They say, no. Now, what we're about to see is a preview of what's to come in the life of the disciples. It's bigger than the fish. Because what I'm about to do is set you on the assignment of your life. Because you all remember, come on. Go back to Luke chapter 5. When he called Peter them from the shore, he says, follow me, and I will make you, all oh, y'all been reading the Bible, I will make you fishers of me. Oh, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Can I tell you this? There are times you have to be disappointed. So that you can get to where God wants you to be. I just get myself. There are times 
can be disappointed. And in that disappointment, God's going to use your frustration for his glory so he can get them to where I want you to be. I don't want you to be out on the sea, but I'm going to use this moment to show you what's destined for your life. So, 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 so. so he says, no one had no food. Um, he said to them, where's it? Cast the net on the right side. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Distinct direction. Yeah. On the right side of the boat. Yeah. And you will find some. Mm -hmm. Well, text says no. that they, they, they did it. They cast it. Mm -hmm. But it was so much that they now we're not able to draw it in. Hmm. Verse 7. Therefore, therefore, because of the instructions, because of the obedience, this led to John to recognize who Jesus was. It wasn't his voice that made John recognize. Uh -huh. It wasn't his presence that made John recognize. Uh -huh. But it was the provision. Uh -huh. Has God ever provided so much in your life yeah. that you know it was God? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. that, 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 that he, he provided in such a way that, that you know without a shadow of a doubt that it was God. You know it was God. Right. We know that. Yeah. 
But we do so, we do also know that Christ appeared on the shore, them not knowing, instructed them to cast the boat, cast the nets over the right side of the boat, and they had a big catch. Okay? We do know that John identified him as the Lord. And we do know that Peter, in his excitement, jumps into the water to go swim to the shore to meet the Lord. What else do we know? Because we've seen God restore wedding, I'm sorry, restore wine at a wedding. We've seen in John chapter 2 where the wine has run out. Don't, don't forget it. We, we, we saw him, watch this, he never had an encounter with the water. He never had an encounter with the water. But somewhere between the poor and the sick, there was a change. Y'all missed that. Okay. He, he never touched the water. Then we see blind eyes open. We, we see, watch this. Now that was some he touched. But then there was some he said, go. Mm -hmm. We, we see people with leprosy be healed at his word. But we never see in the text the Christ who provides breakfast. <laughs> what they have not caught all night, Jesus already has. What they could not catch, he already had. That's all I got for you. 
And when life hands you disappointment, just wait on the morning time. In the morning time, I had some rough nights. But in the morning time, the latter part of Psalms 30 verse, I guess it's 4 or 5, it said weeping may endure, but what not? But joy in the morning when Jesus showed up. Yeah, in the morning. When the wounded Savior shows up in the morning with nail pressed hands, nail pressed feet, a hole in his side. You know he died, don't you? But he got up on the third day morning with all power in his hands. And the risen, resurrected Savior wants to have breakfast with you. He wants to sit with you because he's going to allow you to call all night long. But you can't forget the word of affirmation. That you cannot forget the word of his provisions. That you cannot forget the word of his protection. And watch God work in your life. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his love wings, his love abides. Can I tell you, God will? Can I have somebody say, God will? Somebody tell them God will take care of you without a shadow of a doubt. He's taking care of us through 20 and 20 with pandemics all around us. He's taking care of us even in the life of inflation. Meat is hot. Gas is hot. The tin is going up. But the Lord is taking care of your testimony today to help me help somebody to, and tell them God will take care of you. Just hold on. To, don't fret to, and don't give up to, and let him work to, and God will come to see about you. To, is there anybody here to, under the sound of my voice that knows God will to,
tall and you're in the midnight of your life. You ain't come nothing, can't nothing go right. Nothing's going your way. Can I tell you, just wait on Jesus. Just wait on him. He hasn't forgot about you. Just wait on him. Oh, what he used to say. May not come. Don't be the moment. He's going to be there on time. Yes, he will. Yeah. We offer Christ to you today. We offer Christ to you. And we 
have to get a relationship with the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, you may have confessed and been baptized, yes. but are you living up to the true potential that God wants you to live yes. up to? Yes. But also, I want to say this. Until we get out and vote, these congressmen and senators who have made a life of right. career out of this, we're not going to see any progress. And my thinking is the whole thing needs to be scrapped. From top to bottom. There needs to be a gutting out of the Senate and the Congress. And to send some fresh people in. Yeah, but then we also need to put a term limit on terms. Yeah, yeah. And after so long, you got to go. Yeah. You can hold on for 30 years and you have not done anything productive, yeah, but your pockets have grown. Yeah. A song wife should not be available to be bought. No. What in the world I would need with an assault wife? I got my guns, but I don't need no assault. Right. Right. Who the hell are you trying to take out? Yeah. Been locked and dead. Yeah. I go to the gun range and I see these young guys with these assault rifles. I'm thinking to myself, why do you need all that? Yeah. Handgun, okay. Yeah. But a assault rifle? Yeah. Assault rifle should not be available. Yeah. Exactly. Those things should be stored away for military purposes only for war. But, but we have to realize that this is a scheme of the devil to take people out. Hey, let me shut up. No, I won't shut up. I know if I die, I'm going to heaven. We can't just shout on Sundays, y'all. We gotta speak up, y'all. Because next time it may be our keepers. And I guarantee you, if something happened to Kelsey, all hell gonna break loose around, around St. Louis. I love the Lord, but I will fight. I'll fight. And you'll fight for yours. And, and watch this, we'll fight for each other's. But we want Channing to have a future. We want Jeremiah to have a future. We want Malachi to have a future. What's your name? I can't remember saying baby. I've been saying that baby wrong name for all our life. Makaya. We want Makaya to have a future. But we cannot be quiet. Isaiah's graduated from high school. We want that young man to have a future. Yes, yes, yes. Layla just graduated. We want that young lady to have a future. Yes, right. We can't just get quiet and get scared and go back into it. So we got to fight yes, with, our vo with our voice. Yes. And we got to pull our resources to together. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's my soapbox. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For the worship on today. We thank you, Lord, for the word through music. We thank you, Lord, through the word of the book. Now, Lord, we come lifting those families in Texas, Lord. And lift that city, that area. Lord, we just ask for your mercy. Lord, look upon those parents. Look upon the family of those teachers who are little bit grief, Lord. Please, Lord, show comfort. And I know that the same God that works in St. Louis is the same God that works in Texas. Lord, please touch the heart of those ignorant senators and congressmen. That they will not be concerned about their personal grief, but about the lives of the people. Lord, give our president the know-how to lead us through this moment. Lord, we need reform. But we know it.
world starts with you. Until we turn our face back to you. Love ourselves. So please, Lord, let us be the example. From Texas to Missouri, throughout this California, throughout this world. Lord, be with us now. We're toiling. It is nighttime for us, and we're toiling. Be with us now on this journey. Bless this church. Bless the members that are traveling. Lord, give them traveling grace. Lord, we pray for those who are watching virtually, Lord. Bless them now. We lift up Deacon and Mother Foss on the day, Lord. Pray for that strength and that healing. Lord, we lift Sister Doris Allen on the day. We pray for the ones that are in the sixth room beside my voice. Bless the Lord afresh. Please, Lord, have mercy upon us. Yes, Lord, breathe on us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's prepare for gifts.
15 minutes. You give yourselves a hand. Now listen, there are some clothing in the hallway as well as downstairs. We got some good stuff. Y'all hear? Yeah. We got some good stuff. We got some good stuff. We just need to sit. So for those who need some clothing, or you know somebody who does need clothing, it's okay. Help yourself. Help yourself. Amen? Amen. We need some volunteers for the clothes picture. Anybody want to volunteer? See, this is Charlie Smith. Is she here today? Yeah. Okay, this is just a little bit. See, this is Charlie Smith. Um, if you want to volunteer for the clothes picture, we need some hands on deck. Amen? Plus, again, we, it's time for us to get back active. Amen. It's time for us to get back active. Amen? All right. Receive the benediction. Receive the benediction. Receive it. Receive it. Wednesday. Wednesday, 6.30. 6.30, praise, prayer, and preaching, amen. Now this Wednesday, I'm going to preach, okay? This Wednesday, I'm going to preach this Wednesday. So preaching, praise, and praying, and preaching this Wednesday. Listen, it wasn't many here Wednesday, but that day at Keeley, that little ball here ain't going to preach his butt off. Amen, he's away on the side of the day, praying for him as well. Uh, he's preaching away today, and uh, listen, that boy preach Wednesday. And listen, there were about five, six people up in here, and that nigga will preach like he was a house full. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Tracy did the other week, man. They been preaching. They didn't yeah. preach last night. Like they been preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Listen, you see the benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you late. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless us going down. He's coming in. His from now for a moment. Lord bless you and your children and your children's children. The Lord bless every aspect of your life. God, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, we commit the Holy Spirit. Rest with the Bible, let's hear from now and forever, and all God's people say they're back. Peace be with you.